Um, you're occasionally asked to show proof of eligibility so that if, uh, you, if it's uh, a, an application that's limited to US citizens, you may have to show a birth certificate that shows you were born in the US or you might have to show a passport uh, that, that shows you are a US citizen. Um, almost all of the uh, research fellowship applications ask for a statement of your previous research experience. Um, they, they want to be sure they're going to get a good investment uh, in you. Um, there's often a uh, section for proposed plan of research, what you plan to do with your uh, fellowship funding. Uh, almost all the letters of reference, almost all of the applications call for letters of reference. Um, and usually at least three letters of reference. And so you have to manage the process of getting your letter writers to get their letters written and uploaded to the portal before the deadline too. Uh, and very often uh, the applications will ask for transcripts or GRE scores. And so you'll have to make arrangements ahead of time to get, get official copies of your transcripts to get uh, ETS to send your GRE scores to the uh, fellowship office uh, and so on. Uh, I can't emphasize this strongly enough. You need to figure out what documents you need for what application well ahead of time, well before the deadline. I would say you should do a month before the deadline, everything you need to put together. Uh, in order to, to submit a strong, complete, compelling application. Uh, I also recommend that you prepare as much as you can offline. Um, and again, start writing early. Write your statement of purpose, give it to your advisor or a trusted professor to read, have them give you feedback on it, revise it. If you're not a good proofreader, find somebody who is a good, good proofreader who can proofread your statement before you upload it. Um, one thing uh, I think that is characteristic or endemic about Americans is we tend to be very harsh about what we consider careless errors. And your uh, graduate school application, your graduate fellow application have to be perfect. Uh, reviewers will judge very harshly a, uh, a statement that has typographical errors or grammatical errors <coughs> in it. And so you want to give yourself time to really practice and polish and get feedback and make your application just as perfect as you can. Uh, and then once you've sort of assembled these things offline, you can just cut and paste from your proofread document into the uh, form fields in the uh, application portal. And you'll get much better, um, much better results that way than just trying to type in things on the fly. Uh, one other thing that I've learned the hard way uh, in, in applying for federal funding is once you get everything uploaded to the server, print out a hard copy from the server and read that. And that way you'll see, I mean, you won't realize that you uploaded your, your CV where you were supposed to upload your personal statement unless you print the copy out from the server. And um, as I said, that's one thing that I've learned the hard way over uh, the years. and. And just doing that will uh, save you a lot of grief uh, in the in the long run. Also, um, I, once I, you get yes, oh, I have a question. Um, um, so here you're talking about proofreading the material, and oftentimes um, proofreaders can be people that we know or professors that we know. But some of these students are applying for the NSF grant. So how much should they involve the, prof uh, uh, the professor that has inspired the idea behind the NSF? Okay, I didn't quite hear the last part of your question. Oh, you how, how much should they involve the professor 
who inspired the idea of this NSF proposal into the proofreading part of the application? That's a very uh, individual uh, sort of thing. It First of all, it depends on whether the professor is a good proofreader. Uh, he or she may or may not be. Um, the professor may not have time to do it, may not want to do it, um, but at a minimum, you should have your advisor read your personal statement and your research plan to make sure the science is correct. Um, and then, you know, you can have somebody else do the proofreading uh, if, if the advisor doesn't have time to do it or is not a good proofreader. Um, Thank you. You know, it, they say it takes a village to raise a child takes a village to create a successful graduate fellowship application. And so find people who can help you and exploit them ruthlessly. Uh, we all want to see you succeed. We're happy to help. And, you know, we may spot something that, that you don't see that could be a fatal flaw in your application. Another uh, old proofreader's trick that I'll share with you is that once you have your material ready and your word processing program, print out a hard copy and proofread that. I don't know why it is, but mistakes will just leap off the paper at you that you are completely oblivious to on screen. There's been some research done that shows that different part of your brain processes words on paper versus words on a monitor. And uh, always, 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 if something's gotta be perfect, take the time to print it out and proofread from the hard copy. There are a couple of other tricks that will help you proofread if, you, if you're not a good proofreader. Uh, one is instead of reading from, starting at the upper left-hand corner of the document and reading across and down the way we read in, in Western languages, start at the lower right corner of the page and read backwards and up. And doing that forces you to look at each word individually. And you'll see things proofreading that way that you won't see if you just read the way you ordinarily read. Another thing that, another trick that may help you is to um, read the document out loud. Don't just look at your paper document, but read it out loud. Again, that forces you to slow down and look at every word as you're reading. And you'll spot things that way that you, you won't see just reading. Um, another trick is to use your finger and underline each line as you're proofreading. That slows you down too and makes you look at each separate word. Um, and as I said, some people are good proofreaders and others aren't. And if you're not, find somebody who is, who can help you. Um, every submission portal is different. Some portals require you to pre-register before you can begin an application. Uh, most require passwords that you may or may not be able to recover if you forget. So. If you've set up an account and logged on, write down your password someplace. Um, some portals require everything to be completed in one session. That's why it's very useful to have everything prepared ahead of time on a word processing document that you can just cut and paste into the form fields on the uh, application. Uh, some will kick you out after some period of inactivity, you get interrupted, you have to go take care of something, you come back and discover that the portal has kicked you out and hasn't saved anything that you've already entered. And again, that's where it's invaluable to have a word processing document that you've already perfected, that you can just pick up again without having to reproduce everything from scratch. Some work fine in one browser and not at all in another. Uh, so if the, the portal is acting wonky, uh, try it in a different browser and see if that helps. 
Um, tip, get familiar with the portal well before the application deadline. Uh, and as you're poking around, answer these questions uh, to, to make sure that once you're ready to, to submit your application, uh, you're not scrambling at the last minute trying to fix something. Um, here are some upcoming deadlines. Um, the uh, DOE, National uh, Nuclear Security Agency, and Pacific Northwest National Labs have already, um, ex are, the, their deadlines have already passed uh, for this year. But for those of you who will be applying next year, uh, start looking for uh, the announcement for that, those uh, graduate research fellowship programs uh, in, in early August. That's usually when they're announced. Uh, the National Science Foundation uh, deadlines this year are October 19th to the 22nd, depending on what uh, directorate of the National Science Foundation you're applying to. Um, there is uh, a number, there are a number of grad research fellowships for STEM diversity. Uh, those um, start around the 1st of December. Uh, again, you're welcome to use our graduate college database to find those. Uh, the NIH uh, Ruth Kirstein Fellowship uh, applications are due December the 8th this year, and the Ford Foundation for Underrepresented Minorities in STEM, uh, their deadline this year is December the 17th. Um, and so uh, if you have any questions now, uh, you know, please sing out. Uh, this is the, the end of my formal presentation on fellowships, uh, but I'm happy to answer questions now. If you think up a question tomorrow, just send me an email at cmelliot at illinois.edu. And uh, also shameless self-promotion alert. I have a, an extensive website uh, at physics.illinois.edu um, on resources, uh, technical writing resources for students, for proposal writers, for fellowship appliers, and so on. And you're more than welcome to to poke around on my website and take advantage of anything you might find there that will help you with your application. So I am going to escape out of my screen sharing and stop the share now. And um, looks like we've got some questions in the chat. So I'll take um, questions. I think that we, we still, um, we don't have any questions right now, but I'm sure that they will come in as, as we speak. Uh, okay. Um, uh, you, uh, students, you can also raise your hand and um, I can, um, you know, um, you can raise your hand in the participant window and, and I can monitor this. Um, um, oh, if I may, I also, I'll transition over to automatic captioning for the remainder of the Q&A section. Okay, thank you, Stephen. No, of course. Um, that'll that'll take just one second mm -hmm. uh, to set up. Um, I also want to um, say that um, um, a lot of these resources that Celia uh, was telling you about today were extremely useful um, when I was when I was applying myself. Um, in particular. Um, this, this reading on, on the paper and reading backwards, um, it's something that um, I really recommend that everybody gets in the, in the habit of doing, particularly when you're submitted something that you've, you put a lot of work into it because you do not want your work to be distracted by just like a misspelling or uh, a bad proposition. Um, so I totally recommend doing those uh, exercises that Sally was talking about uh, if you go on uh, her website, you have this section called Miss Particular um, Rules on, on Grammar, right? In style. Right, exactly. And, yeah, and this, are, uh, this is a, a tremendous resource in, in just uh, to read on and, and to understand what are some of the most common pitfalls when it comes down to uh, scientific writing. Um, so feel free to peruse the website 
and um, and and take a look at that. I can share my screen again. I will put it up here. Um, is this for a uh, link? Yes. Um, oh, do you need to do that, Stephen? In, or it may also, if you wanted to navigate through the website, um, or were you just going to show it? Um, well, I was going to navigate through it a little bit, if that's. No, nope, that works. Um, now I just need to turn off the. Um, well, off listen, the let, me, let, me just, let me just send you the link in the chat, Stephen. Oh, okay. Maybe you can do it on your screen. Yes. Okay. Let me try that. Okay. So it's uh, physics, Illinois.edu slash people slash Celia. And then again, as, as we're doing this, uh, we remind you guys that, um, um, that questions are welcome. And um, if you want to know a little bit more about the process of um, applying for fellowships or um, any any kind of questions, is, is completely welcome. You can put it on the chat, or you can also raise your hand. Okay, if you could put the um, if you could put the the website in the chat. Yep, I did. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I sent it privately to somebody instead of to everyone. Let me try this again. No worries. There you go. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, so the captioning should be showing up on the left hand side of the screen. Um, and it looks like, okay, so yeah, here's your, your website is now. Right. On. So um, just scroll down past all of the departmental pr propaganda at the top of the screen. Aha, you're doing further, it further. Further. And there, uh, there's the links to uh, various stuff uh, for proposal writers and for students and technical writers. Um, the the uh, part of the website that Rodrigo uh, referred to is this Smith's particular micro lecture on style and usage. Do you want to want me to pull that up? Yeah, go ahead and pull that up if you can, Stephen. Thank you. And so these uh, are. Um, kind of micro lectures on frequently confused words, uh, frequently misused words in science writing, um, frequent errors in notation, uh, and, and so on. And I try to keep them short. Um, I usually have illustrative examples that I've taken from other people's papers, um, but uh, that I have made, I don't provide any bibliographic citations to protect the guilty. Um, this is a short, I have spent so much time the last 27 years trying to teach physicists the difference between which and that, that I finally just wrote this little paper that I just hand to people when I, they ask me to edit something and they come back and ask me why I scratched out all the witches and made them that. Uh, most of the things are much, much shorter than that. Yeah, well, actually I've needed this like my entire life, so. <laughs> I, 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 can, I always use this website whenever I have a question. Uh, it comes up a lot, uh, especially to make it this. Um, yeah. But as um, we do have a couple of questions here, um, the first question is, um, uh, somebody asked that, well, somebody commented that they're not completely, they do not completely understand what a fellowship is. Uh, it says, I thought that there were like a year long opportunities to travel and do research. Are those, a rep 
are those a separate type of fellowships from the ones that you have uh, listed for graduate schools? Uh, yes, they are different. Uh, typically, a fellowship uh, provides a, your stipend for you, and they're valuable to graduate students because um, you don't have to do any work uh, in response for them. Most graduate students, at least in the beginning part of their careers, are supported as teaching assistants. And so you have to teach about 20 hours a week, usually, for your stipend that gives you your tuition waiver and your, your um, uh, salary. And with one of these external fellowships, there's no work required for them. So you have more time available to you to work on your research. Uh, it may help you get, uh, reduce the time to degree because you can devote all of your time and attention to uh, doing your graduate research. Um, usually after a couple of years of TA, supporting yourself by being a teaching assistant, uh, you'll join a research group and then you're supported uh, ideally by the advisor uh, whose research group you're in. Um, and uh, he, will, he or she will have grants available and you'll be paid a stipend off of the grant. Um, not every faculty member has enough external funding to support all of her graduate students. Uh, and so uh, even though you're in a research group and are actively working on your dissertation research, you may still have to TA to support yourself. Um, and so in that case, uh, you're, very, you're more attractive to a faculty member to join his or her research group because you're ha you have your own money. He doesn't have to pay for your research out of your, uh, uh, out of his grant, limited grant funds. Uh, there are also other uh, types of, of um, fellowships. The National Science Foundation in particular has a number of these that will support a graduate student for a limited amount of time, usually six months, uh, maybe up to a year, to get training outside of the, the faculty advisor's immediate research group. But the faculty member has to have an underlying NSF grant uh, to, su to support that research. And then uh, the, the faculty member can apply for a supplement to the grant to let you go do a six month internship in uh, industry or to uh, go to Europe to uh, work with a collaborator uh, in Europe for three to six months to get some international perspective. Mm -hmm. but, but most recent graduate research fellowships are uh, bread and butter uh, type type support uh, and they pay, they pay your salary. Yeah, again, um, in, 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 most, um, in, mo in, in, in most PhD programs here in the United States, you are not paying uh, tuition, uh, you're receiving a stipend, but the, the, the way that you justify the receiving of the stipend depends on your circumstances. And it could be either research, uh, your professor is paying it, uh, or maybe you are a TA, you're doing a service to the university and you're getting paid for it, or you have a fellowship. Um, from my perspective, for example, as a student with a fellowship, it also makes things easier in terms of like what research projects I want to pursue and how, um, if, how likely I am to be hired by a professor. They like seeing people who already bring in their own money. And if you bring in your own money, you can, you can say, hey, I like this, this uh, stuff that you do in your group, but I want to give it this flavor and I want to do this project. And um, it gives you a little bit more freedom. Exactly. Does that answer your question, Kimberly? Okay, and then any 
Doctor has a question another for us. question here. Um, two more questions. Um, if you apply for fellowships this year, when will they begin? Are these fellowships all online? Uh, most of the major fellowships are all online. If you apply for them this year, they will probably begin next year. So you apply fall 2020 for a fellowship that would start in fall 2021. Perfect. Um, I, I also received a, another question in um, um, uh, anonymously that says, um, a lot of people say to apply for the NSF um, fellowship as a senior. However, I chose not to apply this year because I had other responsibilities I do con due to COVID. I'm worried that I might be making a mistake for not prioritizing the fellowship enough, even though I don't have time to apply. Um, could you provide with some advice here? Um, that's a really good question. And um, yes, I think it's probably too late to try to, to get an application in this year. Um, so, what you need to think about is when are you going to apply as a graduate student? And you can apply either next year when you're just starting in graduate school, or you can wait until fall of 2022. Uh, and frankly, I, I advise our graduate students to um, wait and apply that beginning of their second year in graduate school. Um, because I think you could just write a better application. You've got a little more experience. You've got, uh, presumably you have a relationship with a faculty member uh, that you've established your first year uh, who can give you good advice. Uh, and I think uh, probably uh, it, if you don't apply as a senior, wait until that beginning of your second year in graduate school to apply for an NSF. So it should be noted that you can only apply once, correct me right. if I'm wrong, but I think that you can only apply once as a grad student. That's and right. if you're an undergrad and decide to apply, this is kind of a freebie. So if you want to see how, how, it, how it feels like to apply and you're a senior right now and um, because it, it will also help you in writing your personal statement definitely and kind of give you a flavor of what it is to like, what it is like to, to, to write a proposal, a, a, um, a richest proposal, you could do that. Um, um, as an undergrad, you are not, if you apply as an undergrad, uh, you're, that doesn't count as your time, uh, your single time that you can apply, you can then apply again. So please take that into consideration. Yep. Um, we have another, does, does that answer the question? Um, um, okay. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have another question. It says, do you have any knowledge about the Hertz Fellowship? If so, what advice would you give to somebody applying to it and doing the interview that comes along with it? Um, yes, uh, I'm familiar with the Hertz Fellowship. I'm proud to say three of my students have won Hertz Fellowships over the years. Um, and they are um, a little bit different uh, from other fellowships. There is a, a requirement that you, um, it's not exactly a loyalty oath to the United States, but it's sort of like that, that uh, in the event of some national emergency, you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and that, frankly, is somewhat off-putting for some students. Um, and it, it's something that you should be prepared to um, address uh, in your interview. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think um, just, you know, have a, a compelling story to tell and tell your story. Practice, uh, write things down ahead of time. Uh, if your university has a uh, career services center, 
they, uh, they often will uh, arrange for mock interviews for you. Or if your university has a uh, fellowship office, uh, they will uh, give you a lot of guidance in, in how to prepare your statement of purpose and how to prepare for the interview. So I, I'd, I'd encourage you to look uh, for resources uh, at your local institution first. Um, Madison Allen, I see, has a, a question in the uh, chat that, that's a good question. And this is about the research statement that you have to write uh, for uh, many of the graduate fellowship applications. Um, so for um, the NSF Graduate Fellowship, you are not held to your research plan. What the, the reviewers look for when they're evaluating these fellowship applications on the research plan is they use it as a diagnostic to try to tease out how you think about problems and how you would go about articulating a problem and addressing a problem and whether you have sufficient uh, skills and background and resources available to you to be able to tackle a scientific problem. You're not held at all to doing the problem you describe in your application. Uh, for seniors, you're required to uh, say what university you plan to do your graduate study at. You're not, if you get an NSF graduate fellowship, you don't have to go to the school that you say you applied for. Um, because, um, as I said, they, they use that as a diagnostics, diagnostic. So, for example, you want to go into computational science and you put that you want to go to the University of Texas, Austin. Well, the University of Texas, Austin has two new supercomputers, Ranger and Stampede. And so a reviewer would expect to see in your research statement that A, you know about these resources at the University of Texas, and you have an idea of the kind of, pro, uh, kind of project you would do with these resources that are available at the University of Texas. If you get the NSF Graduate Fellowship and decide you'd rather come to the University of Illinois and use our Blue Water supercomputer, you're free to do that. Mm -hmm. So look at the research statement as something that you can write authoritatively and compellingly about. It might be the project that you're working on now as an undergraduate that you have no intention at all of pursuing as a graduate student, but that you can write clearly and compellingly about that research. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, I, I think I, I want to second that completely. You are not tied to your research. I applied for the NSF as if I was going to go to Caltech. Caltech rejected me. And I ended up at Illinois. I applied for condensed matter physics. I ended up in quantum information theory. And, and, and I've already submitted my yearly report and NSF didn't tell me, you know, didn't tell me, oh, you know, what you do. Uh, they were happy to know that I was still making progress. Um, so you're definitely not tied down. The most important thing is that you develop a cohesive proposal, uh, writing a research proposal, one that has good methods um, and, and, and a cohesive story. Right. Um, we have about five minutes here. Um, okay, let me see if I can get these next two questions. Um, uh, one uh, participant wants to know, uh, for the NSF uh, research proposal, how original does the methodology have to be? Uh, it, it doesn't have to be some brand new technique. Uh, in fact, um, the reviewers would not expect, expect a senior in, in college or a first year graduate student to have invented a new technique. Um, but it, it would be uh, perhaps applying a technique that you have mastered to a new material or a, uh, a different um, 
project. So uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be unique at all. Um, and then uh, John Cook has a question, will fellowship supplement a fully funded graduate program or it will be in lieu of federal funding? It depends. One thing I love about my job is about 99.99% .99 of the questions I ask, I'm asked, I can answer with, it depends. Uh, so uh, it, it, it depends on the graduate school. Uh, it depends on your graduate program. It depends on the um, uh, fellowship funder, uh, what their rules are. Um, usually you can't take two federal fellowships. So if you get the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship, you can't turn around and ask for a DOE fellowship or a National Nuclear Security Administration fellowship too. Um, one of the um, peculiarities of the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship is it will pay you a stipend for three years, but you can take it over five years. So you might want to take it your first year in graduate school and not have to worry about money and while you're concentrating on your classes, not have to TA. Uh, and then maybe you will join a research group and the research uh, advisor has funding for you this year. So you are paid off of the faculty members uh, research grant and then his funding runs out in two years. And so you go back and use your second year of your NSF graduate fellowship um, for the second year. So it's, it's pretty flexible. flexible. Uh, other fellowships are, you know, you take it this year, you can't defer it. You can't take another fellowship. Uh, it, it just really depends. Mm -hmm. It's something that um, I would go ahead and apply for it anyway. Uh, be, just because it's so, um, gives you so much more flexibility. Yeah. And, and when you do fill out the application for graduate school, um, let's say that you're applying to the University of Chicago or the University of Illinois, uh, they will ask you if you are thinking about applying for an NSF fellowship or other fellowships. And I think that the aim for that is to understand where people are going to land in terms of funding. Um, it, it's not a deciding factor. If you win NSF, you will get accepted or not, but it is something that um, universities think about because the, um, the fully funded uh, graduate programs, what they do is they ensure you that somehow you will get, you will get paid. Um, and, and, but the, the some, some, somehow you will get paid, but how it depends, right? You may get a TA job or you may get an RA job or if you have a fellowship, they like that because then they can reallocate resources uh, accordingly. Right. But yes, in a fully funded program, you're guaranteed to have the money. Now, how you get it, it's gonna depend. Um, if you get to teach, then you have to spend time teaching. Uh, so it's always good to, to come with a little bit of money on your pocket. Yeah. Okay. All right, maybe not to interrupt, but yeah, Roger, you think it maybe it's time? Yeah, I think it's uh, time to 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 uh, to go to the closing remarks. Um, I want to thank Celia um, for um, for uh, her talk today. It was um, I'm very thankful for for all your help throughout the years, uh, and I hope that the students um, get a lot out of it. Um, if you have any questions for Celia, feel free to email her. Um, um, you can find her email on the website or also in the chat if you scroll up, or uh, you can email me um, and, and I can relay, relay the information to self. Right. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, everybody. Good luck. Go out and do great things. And if you haven't thought about coming to the University of Illinois for graduate school, think about it. It's a great university. It is. We'd love to see you in physics. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye everybody. I'm gonna sign off.